everyone and welcome to worship today. As you know, we have been on a long, long journey through this coronavirus pandemic together. Part of the impact of the pandemic has been that we have not been able to meet together in church since way back in March. Next Sunday, however, we plan to worship again in our own sanctuary. But before talking about that, I want to thank absolutely everyone who has played such a big part in making sure we have been able to continue our worship life online. Your service and your support has been invaluable and essential in so many, many different ways. Now, turning towards next Sunday, I also want to thank Gavin Henry and his implementation group for all the work they have done to put in place the best protocols and processes possible for ensuring that everything will run safely and smoothly. You may already have received a letter about how things have been planned out. If not, you will shortly. In essence, your letter says that to maintain social distancing and to follow the safety advice we have been given, we can accommodate about 60 people in Bandside. If you want to be part of that group, text, phone or email Gavin on the contact details provided. And know also that the service from Bandside, from our own church, will also be put on Facebook and on YouTube. But you know, whether we worship together online or in church, we worship for the same purposes, to celebrate the presence of God with us on our journeys and to tell the story of God's love for us, for all people and for the entirety of creation. In ancient Israel, when people attended the celebration of the first fruits of the harvest, they were supposed to bring a gift and to recite the story of how they became the people of God through God's liberating power. Like a creed, they said, my ancestors were wandering Arameans and went down into Egypt. We were few in number. But we grew and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. The Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, putting us to hard labour. Then we cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard us and saw our toil and our misery and our oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with miraculous signs and wonders. God brought us to this place, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. And in worship, we bring our gifts, our gifts of thought and mind and reflection, our gifts of prayer and song and involvement. And you know, in the earliest church, people told the story of their faith and their hope, saying, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In God's great mercy, God has given us new life and hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God has brought us into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all comfort and compassion, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. As we come into worship today, let us pray. God of all our years, guide of all our times. We give thanks this day 
that we are part of your great story of hope and healing. We give thanks for the mothers and fathers, the teachers and the ministers who have shaped us. We give thanks for everyone who has told us the story of you and of your love, the story of your justice and how you call us to live. Forgive us when we go wrong. Renew us when we are tired and hear us now as we pray together as Jesus taught us saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Keep us from the time of trials and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We now sing together the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. After that, Jane Scott will bring us our reading for today. in our service, listen for the word of the Lord to us, as we find it in Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 to 12. The writer talks to us about faith and faithfulness. He says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous, when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life 
so that he did not experience death, he could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to God must believe that God exists and rewards those who earnestly seek God. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he showed that, that the world had gone wrong, and so he became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abram, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered the one who had made the promise faithful. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. This is God's word of hope and encouragement to us today. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, be with us today by your spirit of hope. Speak to us part of your great story of love and help us now and always to follow Jesus. Amen. From when we're tiny babies till we are really old, human beings are meaning-making creatures. From birth to death and at every stage in between, we're trying to make sense of what's happening all around us, how it fits together and what our place in the scheme of things might be. We're putting our story into the bigger story of the world as we experience it and understand it. Think of a happy, secure toddler growing to understand herself as the centre of attention. At a point, though, she has to relearn as parents insist she goes to sleep when she is put in her cot. And if a little brother or a little sister should come along, her nose may well be seriously out of joint for a while. On her little journey, at times no doubt in confusion, the toddler is finding out that others sometimes have to come first. Or think about a disturbed child, abused or neglected, then moved from his birth family by unknown authorities. Through bitter experience, he could learn that no adult can be trusted to keep him safe. In the worst of cases, if he is not helped to change his story, he may well grow up to have little inclination to consider the safety, the well-being or the feelings of others. For all of us, the truth is that on occasions, the coherence and the security and the comfort of our own story is rudely interrupted. You know how this works. There is illness, there are accidents, there is violence, hardship, and yes, at some stage, there is the shadow of death. Things happen and we are forced to rewrite our story, whether we like it or not. And part of the punch of the coronavirus pandemic is that it is now forcing us to rewrite our story as individuals, as family units, as societies, as nations and on a global level. Aspects of life that so many of us simply accepted as reliable, predictable, solid, assured, guaranteed, like shopping and shaking hands and sending children to school and general levels of safety are turning out to be fraught and insecure. So much is so perplexing and unnerving. Many of us are discovering just how vulnerable we are in so many spheres of life. There's little to take for granted. We are not as in control as we imagined. 
in the midst of all of this, let me signpost and nudge you towards what an outstanding resource the Bible really is and what an amazing story it tells. At its heart, it is about the world, the whole of creation, where it is going and what our role in it is. It is about how, in birth and in death, in war and in peace, in power and in oppression, in hunger and in plenty, ordinary human beings like you and me came to know that they were in relationship to God. It's about how, through repeated encounters with God's justice and God's mercy, they came to trust that God was with them in everything, to free them from fatalism and give them purpose. And the core of that purpose was to be a blessing in the world. And the means of enacting that blessing was to seek justice, to show constant love and to walk in humble fellowship with God. And you know, they had a summary of what was centrally important. This was like a creed or a confession of faith. It starts, my ancestors were wandering Aramaeans who went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But this is not a celebration of gaining strength and status so that you can lord it over others. This is not an assertion of self-reliance but about deep dependence on God and deep trust in God. It's about how, when you cry out, God delivers with signs and wonders and guides you to a life of fruitful abundance. The purpose of this summary of faith is to underscore for the people that everything that they have is a gift from God and that God journeys with them down the generations, in times of wayward wandering and in times of powerful preeminence, in experiences of oppression and in experiences of liberation. And the writer of Hebrews, as we have listened to him today, reminds us that we are a part of this story. We are pilgrims grafted into it by faith, following in the footsteps of Sarah and Abraham, Noah and Enoch, and all the rest recounted in the Hebrews 11 roll call of fame. Therefore, as the opening of Hebrews 12 puts it, since we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race set out before us. Let us fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. If you understand and trust that your story is part of God's story through following Jesus, I give thanks. If you have not yet embraced the truth that you and your story are important to God, let me ask you to consider that and what it would mean for you. And whatever age or stage you are at, let me say that I am glad that your story is part of Banside's story. Whether you are able to be in church next Sunday or whether you worship online, we will journey into the future together. And remember this, because of the encouragement provided by the story of the Bible, cascading through the stories of the great cloud of witnesses, because our story is part of God's great story, we will travel on in hope and in faith, trusting that we shall overcome. We shall overcome the impact and the implications of coronavirus and all the other major issues facing us. As individuals, as societies, as churches, 
and as a global community. Amen. And Scott will now lead us in our prayers for ourselves and for our world. Then we will sing together the wonderful hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Let us pray. God of all, we pray for ourselves and for our world in the perplexing circumstances we find ourselves in. There are many threats and the dangers are not imagined. The power to harm and hurt, undo and upend is on the loose. But in the midst of it all you speak your word, and your word tackles the threats, deals with the dangers, protects from the power to destroy. For this we give thanks. In your abiding faithfulness, in your long-standing reliability, in the promise of your accompanying presence, you speak and open the future to us and to our world. For this we give thanks. You say, fear not, as you have so many times in the past, and our fears subside. For this we give thanks. At this time, be with us on our individual journeys, in all their challenge and complexity, hope and possibility. Be with us as a church, as we think through new ways of worship, care and mission. Be with all our places of learning and all our young people on the path of education and development. Be with all who are sick and struggling and all who provide care and healing in hospitals, nursing homes, family homes, the community and doctor surgeries. Be with us as a society so that we can imaginatively and seriously find ways of addressing coronavirus and the multiple issues arising from it, always providing support for the most vulnerable. Be with us as a human family, giving us vision and true determination to take on global poverty. Deep-rooted inequity, glaring injustice, the threat of vast climate disruption. On all of our journeys, be with us to make us feel safe, to help us feel free and to bring us joy as we travel on our way following Jesus. In his name we pray and for the sake of his promised kingdom. Amen.
on all our journeys and on our journey together. May we know God all around us. May we see Jesus beside us and may we listen to the Spirit within us. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us this day in a very special way and forevermore. Amen. Of God, this spirit.